Hey friends! So in today's video, we're going to do something different. I'm going to be doing business Q&A. A lot of you guys reach out to me in my emails, my DMs, into the comment section. I greatly appreciate it. Please keep doing it. Um, and I usually respond back to all of you, whether it's email, DM, comment, whatever. But I want to start doing videos because I think there are other people who may be kind of shy or a lot of people have the same questions. So let's address it in a video. So here we go. you guys are my friends so instead of me saying the person's name we're gonna say friend so a friend emailed me and she said hello I am friend I am so glad that I ran across your YouTube channel I like your style and approach on how to conduct business with all the changes that we all must now embrace I am stepping into the new and unknown I decided to start customizing bath salts I have researched and have all the basics to start selling I live in the mountains close to the New Jersey state line I love living in the mountains and discovering the mom and pop stores and my favorite stores are the mercantile stores I hope I said that right I may have butchered not sure but my favorite stores are the mercantile stores with its country settings which would be perfect I am using half pint mason jars as sample to potential customers I find that I need direction transitioning to customized Mylar bags I have an idea how to price the product so I think until I talk to an actual person who's in business and is until I talk to an actual person whose business is in motion and successful I would like your advice on how to move forward. It is whatever is convenient and comfortable for you. I know your schedule is tight because you are getting your teacher certification, which will be a game changer for you. Of course, I will understand if you're not available. I will still be watching your channel. Thank you. So first of all, let me just say thank you to you. Um, just for showing support I'm never too busy to support someone else who is supporting me and you obviously support me and my vision and dreams because you are actually watching my videos you had to be watching my videos to know that I am in school for my teacher certification which I'm almost done with that thank you um, and then to also know that I do bath salts because I didn't put those two in the same videos so I know that you've been watching my videos and I'm super grateful and thankful for that so uh, there's a lot of pieces in this email and I learned a lot about your business just from this one email and if I can give you some marketing tips those marketing tips would be one uh, you said that you love the mom and pop stores in your area use that to your advantage when marketing your business um, what is it that you like about the mom and pop stores? You need to use that in your business plan. So for me, um, I have my articles of organization. I am a registered LLC in the state of North Carolina. Um, and I'm still technically considered a mom and pop store. I'm not a big corporation. So one way that I'm able to use the mom and pop store in a marketing um, tactic for my business is we give we do a lot of community service we go into the community and we give back so when someone makes a purchase from us a certain percent of that money um, is going to be able to help us going to the communities and give back so I always let my customers know whether it's on their receipt or by sending them a thank you card like hey this um, purchase has helped us to be able to contribute to doing community service and we just want to thank you for that it's letting the customer know that your dollars 
is contributing to community service. So they're doing something positive for the community. So definitely use that to your advantage. What is it that you really love about the mom and pop stores? And include that into your business plan. Um, the other thing that I've seen up here that is a good marketing tactic, when you talked about the mountains, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't live in a mountain place, area. We do have a lot of hills and things like that. Um, sell me with that mountain experience. Like, I want to know about these mountains that you live in this close to New Jersey. I didn't even know there was mountains close to there. What sense do those mountains remind you of? And that should be one of your number one pushers for your product line. Um, because it sounds like you really love the mountains and if you're passionate about it, you will be able to sell it like you're people think it's hard to sell a pen but if you really love pens you'll be able to sell it so um, I would definitely use that as a benefit to your marketing strategy the other thing that I saw also the country settings use that in your marketing um, so one of the biggest things that you were saying is that you kinda needed to know help with transitioning to the Mylar bags First of all, uh, just do it. So when I first started selling products, I actually started with the cuticle oils and um, the bath scrubs and salts. And they are not in the same packaging that they were years ago when I first started. Um, I definitely changed them and upgraded them. And is this the ending point? Probably not. How many big corporations do you see where something on that product changes? It may stay in the same packaging, but maybe the 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 logo has changed or maybe the um, product label has changed so never be scared to change something in your business it's always a good thing um, as far as transitioning I would definitely use all of the mason jars that you've already um, purchased try and get rid of those before you just call it quits um, you can still implement the mason jars into your um, company when you get ready to do vendor events pop-ups and little things like that if you're if you haven't started doing that I would because for one it's going to help you get brand awareness um, just by the people that are already shopping at those events now that's one more person that knew about you <laughs> so with those mason jars you can use those as the samples to set up on your table would I give that whole mason jar to someone at a an event no what I would do is put a cute wooden spoon in it um, and let them sample put it in their hand or let them smell it because we live in COVID times I would leave the wooden spoon in there for the decoration but I would have a pretty plastic spoon that you can get from Hobby Lobby the dollar store they sell different colors they're really small you can scoop out some hand the person a spoon let them smell it whatever have another trash bag a small trash bag for them to place that spoon and that salt back into that trash bag and discard it so that would help with sanitation and disinfection um, that's what I would use some of those mason jars from because they are very pretty and that would be pretty to display on for your events okay back on topic um, as far as transitioning to the Mylar bags the reason why I decided to switch was because um, glass is heavy and when you're shipping things everything is the price for shipping is based off of the items weight not only that but shipping glass I'm not saying it's not possible because everything is possible what I'm saying is now you've got to take extra measures you've got to get shipping um, bubble you got to get the bubble wrap you've got to make sure that it's secure that it has the fragile stickers on the box it's a lot more that you have to do with shipping something in glass because it is very fragile and you don't want it to get to the customer's house and it is damaged I'm not saying that you can't do it because if you really love the glass and that makes you happy then stick with doing the glass so what I had decided to do was to go with the plastic mason jars um, I was selling an 8 ounce mason um, plastic jar um, and then I realized that I wanted it to be bigger but I was having a hard time finding a mason um, the plastic mason jars that were bigger than 8 ounces so that's when I started uh, venturing out doing research on the Mylar bags so I do have a video on how to use these Mylar bags. I'm going to try and post that up here somewhere right at the end of the video so you can go back and watch that. 
Um, when it came to the Mylar bags, how I found those was, first of all, when I first started with the Mylar bags, I didn't even know they were called Mylar bags. All I did was I got on Amazon and I got on the Google search bar and I typed in, um, resellable, uh, Ziploc bags, expandable Ziploc bags. I knew that I needed something that would expand because with it just being this um, flat, it wasn't going to be enough room for the amount of bath salt that I wanted in it. So what I had to do was find one that expands. So this one opens up and it expands. Um, and after doing research from that, that's when I found out that they were called Mylar bags. And they also had some that had the heated tops to them, um, the heat syllable tops. So, uh, what I started doing was typing in heat sealant um, Mylar bags and heat sealant expandable Mylar bags. And I found four companies that I really liked that had the gold backing to it because I wanted something to look, you know, professional and classy. I didn't want no crazy colors. I just wanted something that looked just as good as the mason jars. So, I found that um, order from three or four companies. I did order in small quantities so that I could test them to see which ones I really like. This one was really durable. Like, I threw it across the room. I stepped on it. Um, I placed a whole bunch of heavy stuff on top of it and it did not break there was no tears it was it was just good uh, so that's what made me purchase these looking back now I wish I had started with the Mylar bags from the beginning just because it's cost effective um, and it's just easier to do and use so going in that direction isn't a bad thing like I think it's a good thing um, the only thing I wish I could tell you the brand that I got this from I brought it from Amazon I do remember that this brand came from Amazon I don't have the email address that I used to purchase this from and so I can't get back in to see what company it is but I am gonna have to rebuy them so when I get ready to rebuy them um, I'm gonna let you guys know I brought a whole bunch in bulk I haven't ran out so that's why I don't have the name for you just yet. I know a lot of people ask me about that, but I will get that for you. So, the other thing that you asked in your email was about pricing. Um, pricing is a beast. When I first started selling, I was like, I'm not doing this right because I am selling like I had people buying. I was shocked. I was shooketh and the amount of sales that I was making. However, it did not feel like I was selling anything because I was pricing my products incorrectly. Um, there is a mathematical equation for pricing your items. Um, and I know when you talk to a lot of people, sometimes they'll tell you basically just see what other people are charging and charge somewhere in that area. That is so incorrect. Please do not follow that. I mean, you can, and I wish you the best of luck if you do. I tried that, obviously failed, um, and I have figured it out. But, uh, and it took for me to get a business consultant to come in and show me that. So, basically, how to price your products. The mathematical equation, are you ready? So, it is materials, labor, expenses, and profit. You're going to add all of those up, and that's going to be your item price. Okay, so let me say that one more time. It is materials plus labor plus expenses plus profit equals your item price. You need to have all of those numbers in order to correctly price your item. So um, I'm going to do another video on product pricing because it is so much that goes into it. It's kind of hard for me to explain in this video. Um, with me only doing 16 minute videos it's a lot to cover but you need all of that information to uh, charge correctly so let's say for I'm gonna use my press on nails as an example let's say it costs me three dollars and this three dollars just for the product and this three dollars it's including the shipping labels it's including the labels on the products it's including the blank press on nails it's including the boxes that I place them in it's including the gift wrapping paper that I gift wrap them with it's including the tape that I use to seal the gift wrap it's including every little thing that I use every little thing okay now once I have that number then I'm gonna add in how much do I want to make an hour for making this or how much how long 
you're going to add in your labor. So I want to be able to make $23 an hour to make this. So now my price has gone up to $23. Then you're going to add in your expenses and your, um, your profit. So let's say it costs me $30 to make this product. It included everything, right? I am now going to sell that item for at least $60 to $100. I know by doing my research that other people who make personal nails, they sell their personal nails anywhere from $12 all the way up to $100. If I sell it at $100, my profit margins are through the roof because it only cost me $30 to make it, right? So that gives me leeway to be able to do discounts, to be able to do giveaways, to be able to do buy one, get ones, anything like that, I'm kind of covered in there. Um, my time, that's my timer going off to let me know I'm getting close to my time. but. That is how you come up with your product price. And like I said, friend, I'm going to make another video. Um, I'm trying to dedicate Mondays to Q&A and business um, videos where we go in and we touch these topics. And I'm definitely going to do another video to show you how to price your products in depth. Like, we're going to sit down and break the math down and all. <clears throat> I hope this video has helped you. I'm so excited about your journey. Um, please keep in contact with me. I love to hear how everything is going. If you have questions about things, don't be afraid to ask. If I don't have the answer, I'll definitely find someone who I think has the answer. Um, I hope I answered all of your questions. If you still have more, reach out to me. I, I don't bite. I'll respond back. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I also have linked my social media um, websites below. Make sure you go and follow me. Um, what else? Don't forget to go to my website to buy merch. That is also located um, down in the description um, when you purchase things from my store it helps me to be able to do more videos and to be able to do things to help give back so I hope you liked it and I'll see you next time